Same nine, take seven. Action. Action. He was out with a different antique weapon. That's correct. Now what's interesting to me is that this shooting bears a very strange resemblance to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln by John Wilkes Booth. And I happen to know that there's a member of this class who has a fascination with Abraham Lincoln. Cut. Cut. Welcome to Acting for Film and TV, brought to you by Lee WTV. I'm your host, Ed Schultz. Today, we're talking about some of the major differences between stage acting and film acting. And there are a number. Some people might say, well, acting is acting. But no, these are two different types of medium that you're using. And there are three major categories of differences between stage acting and film acting, from my point of view at least. One is location. Two is level of intimacy. And three is continuity. The first major difference is location. Now, in stage acting, the performers and the audience are in one big room. The performers are in a relatively small space on the stage, but the audience is at various distances from the performers. Some people may be only 20, 30 feet away. Others could be 100 feet away. So the audience is going to have different perspectives of what's going on. Plus, the audience sees the whole stage, so they can focus their attention wherever they want to focus it. Stage right, stage left, center stage, up stage, down stage this actor, that actor, anywhere they want to focus their attention. In film, that's a lot different. In film and TV, the actors are performing for an audience of one, the camera. The camera is going to focus its attention where the director wants the attention focused. So the audience, who are not sitting in a big room, well, I suppose for film, yes. In a movie theater, you're sitting in the same kind of location as a, a regular theater. However, the difference is the director has decided what you're going to focus your attention on. Now, this next point has to do, in a sense, both with intimacy and with the location. In theater, you are playing to the people in the back of the auditorium or the theater, as well as people in the front of the auditorium or theater. So one of the things that you need to do, even with modern technology and wireless microphones and things like that, you need to project not only your voice, but your actions as well, so that they can all see it. So that the lady in the back row, in one of the cheap seats, who is deaf, can hear or at least appreciate what you're doing by seeing your gestures and by seeing the movements of your body. In film and TV, the camera is going to see everything. That is, everything that the director wants it to see. You're not going to be able to see the entire cast unless the director has some kind of, you know, master shot or establishing shot where they want to show everyone. If there's a particular actor who's speaking, the camera can focus closely in on that actor so that the audience's attention is there. So that has to do with your location. In a film, you're on a set. Or maybe you're in a particular location, like a house or an office building or something like that. You're not in a theater. Now, let me just show you one example of what I'm talking about. In the beginning of what you're about to see, 
I'm sort of simulating what it would be like to be on stage to say 10 particular very familiar words. And the second shot is one that will show you what can be done on film with those same 10 words that could never be accomplished on stage. To be or not to be? That is the question. To be or not to be? That is the question. Now, if I were to do something like you just saw, that kind of extreme close-up on stage, it'd be lost. Maybe, maybe the people in the front row could appreciate it. But, you know, the, the visualness of that as well as the very soft tone would be lost. You know, if you're looking at this, this huge stage and there's this very intimate moment going on, it's going to be lost. Whereas in film, the camera can come as close as it wants to in order to get what it needs. On stage, it's the actor who needs to project project their voice, project their, their motions, things like that. On film, let the projector do the projecting. Now, another difference in terms of location is control over your environment. When you're on a stage in a theater, you have almost absolute control over the conditions, over the environment there. You have control over the lighting. You have control over the sound. You have control over what this room looks like and what kind of interruptions there may be. There won't be because you're in this very small environment. Again, you know, you have three, three walls on a stage, the back wall and the two side walls, and that's it. There's that fourth wall, that invisible wall, uh, we don't, we won't talk about that right now, but everything is controlled. When you're doing film, especially if you're on location somewhere, if you're outdoors doing an outdoor scene, you don't have total control over that environment. What if a plane comes overhead? You're doing a, an intimate love scene in a meadow. plane overhead. Somebody's car backfires. A truck pulls up on the set. Those, a storm starts to brew. Those are all different interruptions that you have no control over. And the light, too. You don't, you don't really have control over the sun. You can try to do the shoot on a sunny day, if that's the look that you're trying to get. But if a whole bunch of clouds come rolling in all of a sudden, the light's gone. You're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of time. Same thing with, as I said, a storm. Anything like that. You do not have as much control over the environment when you are doing film, even if it's in a particular location, like an office building or something like that. You can do the best you can to keep people out of the way, but there you go. Another difference in terms of location is the fact that on stage, as I said, you are on stage. Everything is fake. Let's say that you're doing a scene that's supposed to take place in a forest. Behind you are fake trees. There's a drop, a backdrop, that has pictures, paintings of, of fake trees as well. In a film, you can actually be outdoors in a forest with real trees, with real birds in the sky, with real grass and leaves and all that sort of stuff. So the actor, in a sense, doesn't have to use as much imagination. On stage, you really have to imagine that you're in a forest. On film, you are in a forest, usually. Sometimes you're, you're on a set that has a, a fake forest with fake trees and things like that, but at least you're in an environment that looks a lot more real to you. Now, of course, there's the whole 
business with some of the action movies and things like that with green screen. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Another factor in terms of control over your environment, uh, there, there was a good example in our film, Colt Navy. In a climactic scene at the end of the film, we needed to use a gun in a college classroom. Now, before filming that scene, we went to campus security and asked them, asked them if it would be all right to have a gun in the classroom. And while we're not using it, we could have it locked in the security office. No way, Jose. They would not allow a gun, a fake gun, a prop gun, a cap gun on campus. Anywhere at all. So, the first instinct for me as the writer was, okay, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do here? I mean, this is the climax and it has to be a gun. The name of the, the film is Colt Navy, which is uh, talking about an 1851 Colt Navy revolver that's supposed to be the murder weapon. And this is a climactic scene and it has to use a gun because there's a special reveal that's taking place with this gun. Spoiler alert. So what are we going to do? Could I rewrite it and use a knife? No, that, that, that would totally, no, that would not work. So what are we going to do? What we ended up doing is green screen. We were not allowed to bring the gun into the college classroom. So what we did is to film part, just part of that scene in another location against a green screen and we used photographs of the wall in the classroom to make it look like that's where it was. He wasn't the only one. Todd, Ben, all of them. When I came to college, I thought the bullying would be over. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a man. But it's different now. It's more humiliating than ever. And no one ever stood up for me. Now, the next major factor that's a big difference between stage acting and film acting is the level of intimacy. And in that shot that we did earlier, you can see that difference of level of intimacy. On stage, the audience sees your whole body. On film, the director, the camera, will see different parts of your body depending upon what happens to be important at the time. So you could conceivably, for example, um, be wearing galoshes because the set happens to be very, very wet and wearing a tuxedo. On film, you wouldn't see it. On stage, obviously you're not going to do a stage that's wet, but on stage, they can see everything. So if an actor is nervous, and they're fidgeting with their hands, they don't know what to do with their hands, they put their hands in their pockets, all that sort of stuff. The whole audience can see that. On film, you can fidget all you want with your hands and nobody's gonna see it. Can you see me fidgeting with my hands? No, but if you're on stage, you can see all of this craziness. So that's one of the differences in the level of intimacy. And in film, you can get a greater level of intimacy and pull the audience into the story a lot more easily than you can do it on stage in this huge environment. Continuity is a very important difference between these two types of performances. In a stage play, the story is unfolding in real time in front of the audience from the beginning to the end in that two hours, three hours, whatever it is that the audience is sitting there watching the play. Now granted, in a movie, same two hours, same three hours, something like that, okay, that's fine. That you're seeing, that the audience is seeing when the film is done. But behind the scenes, when you are doing the acting, continuity is, is a big factor. For example, for one thing, very seldom is a movie shot from beginning, middle, end. It's very conceivable that the end of the movie might be shot first, and the beginning of the movie might be shot at the end. A lot of that depends on locations and the availability of the locations, availability of actors. 
Some actors may be working on another project, so they're not available on a particular date, a particular time to do a particular scene. So that's one of the major differences. Now, on stage, there's one angle. People see everything from one particular perspective. But as I've mentioned before, with film, there are different camera angles, for one thing. There also, when, you know, let's say that you're having a conversation between two people. Now, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about making film is that often, not always, but often, the whole film is shot with one camera. Now, imagine a scene with two people in which these two people are talking. The beginning of the scene, you see the two people together talking like this. That's a master shot. Then you see one person, one person who's talking, the other person is in the background, or not actually in the background, more in the foreground, and you see over their shoulder or something else like that. Then the positions are switched. You see the other actor's face over this actor's shoulder. Now what this means is that that scene had to be shot at least three times. Once as a master shot, once the whole scene had to be done this way with actor A here and actor B here, then it had to be done this way with actor A here and actor B here. You don't get a chance to do that in theater. In theater, you do it. You're doing it live. There are no retakes. In film, there are not only retakes, but there are also different angles, different shots, one shots, two shots, all sorts of different angles like that, that again, help to draw the audience in, to make it more intimate, and also to maintain continuity. Rex, in which I played Oedipus. The second play was Macbeth, in which I played Macbeth. I had to make a costume change between those two scenes, from wearing a tunic to wearing black pants, a black turtleneck, and a black jacket. Okay? So, we did the scene from Oedipus. That went just fine. The curtains closed. I ran into the wings where there was a, a, a stage hand waiting for me with my pants and my turtleneck. I changed very quickly, but as I was pulling on my pants, because I had a pair of Bermuda shorts on underneath, it was kind of bulky, and I heard a pop. The zipper broke. I couldn't get my fly up. What am I going to do? I'm backstage. There was no time. They were still, the, the narrator out front was saying the lines. They were going to open the curtain any minute. I had to do a soliloquy by Macbeth. Is this a dagger that I see before me? The handle toward my hand. And I had to do that facing the audience. This is high school teenagers. If they see you standing out there like this, talking about a knife, and your fly is wide open, whoa! They're not going to be watching this invisible dagger. They're not going to be paying attention to you. <laughs> Chaos is going to reign supreme in that theater. Then, not only that, after that soliloquy, Lady Macbeth was supposed to come on stage. So what did I do? Well, for the soliloquy, instead of facing the audience, I had to turn to stage right so that nobody could see. Then... Directly following that soliloquy, Lady Macbeth came on stage to do some lines with me. Well, Lady Macbeth noticed the barn door open. So her attention during all of this scene as she's talking to me, Macbeth, was like that. Well, fortunately, for the next scene, someone found some safety pins and everything was okay. Now, on stage, that could have been a disaster. On film, something like that happens, forget it. Cut. Scene nine, take seven. Another factor in continuity, too, has to do with your, your motions, your position, things like that. Uh, because, as I said, you know, there are retakes. Sometimes an actor will blow their line or something will happen. A, a crew member will drop something and you have to cut and do another take. Well, when that happens, you need to make sure that when you do your part, 
You're using the same gestures at the same time. And all of the things on the set are in the same place at the same time. Also, sometimes those retakes may not happen immediately. They may happen a couple of days, a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months later. You have to do the same thing. I remember one of my favorite TV shows was Mad Men. And I remember seeing a scene in which there was a husband and wife who were in bed just talking to each other. Okay, And they were doing this kind of scene where, you know, A and B are going back and forth between the two people. And uh, in one particular scene, the husband was lying down with his hand behind his head like this. And then they showed the wife. Now, when they showed the wife, you could see him and his hand was not behind his head anymore. But then when it came back to showing him, there's the hand behind the head. So that kind of continuity is also very important. You may or may not have noticed. Now, go back to the first episode in this series. What you may or may not have noticed is that in between all the different points that I was trying to make, my clothes changed. For this particular episode, I'm keeping the same clothes on, but my costume changed numerous times throughout that particular video. So go back to video number one and check that out. See if you can count how many times I changed my costume of what you're doing, of your performance. On stage, you are the editor. You can make subtle changes to your character, to how you deliver your lines, things like that, that night after night. In film, who's the editor? The editor is the editor. So the editor is going to choose. You might have six different takes of a particular scene. You were trying to get it better and better each time you did it. The editor, ultimately, maybe with the, the help of the director, is going to be the one who will choose which one of those scenes will actually end up in the film. You don't get to choose that. You're not the editor on film. You can do as many interpretations as you want, but ultimately it's up to someone else. We're in theater. You're the editor each and every night. So you can vary your performance in every performance if you want to. It's up to you. Bye for now. We'll see you on the set next time. Okay, class, that's it for today. You're dismissed. Now get out of here. But I'll do anything!